All right, man. I need y'all to like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm at. I'm on a road to what? Six K. I'm on a road to. Is it six K? Yeah, I'm on a road to six thousand subscribers. When I first started this, I was at one thousand subscribers. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand how long, how far I've been. Six thousand followers. If I would have, like, thought to myself when I had was about to get a thousand subscribers, I was gonna end up at six thousand. I would be like. I don't believe it. Like, not quick at least. Like, it'll probably take four, five, six years. I like I really think and thought that it was gonna take that many years. Let me get straight to the video though. I'm just seeing. Um he last three seasons with the Chicago Bulls experiencing, you know, both highs and lows, but reflecting on your time in Chicago, how would you, you know, summarize your overall experience being there? It definitely was a, a resurgence because, like, you know, playing in San Antonio, not not that big of a market. You know, I think it was, you know, a complete just, like, down year, like, in the world. So much went on my three years in, in, in San Antonio with a pandemic, us going to a bubble, us, you know, playing with no fans. Like, it, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a lot that went on those three years in San Antonio. So going to Chicago, major city, uh, iconic organization you know um to go back you know especially with my first year there you know having a year that i had you know being an all-star being being in an mvp uh race um you know everything like it was it was it was kind of like a you know dream come true you know in in, in a re resurgence of a season you know playing with all those guys you know and the next year the same you know being all-star again you know um having a banged up team, you know, fighting against the odds, everything, you know, um, and even to this last year, you know, me being, you know, 34, you know, I think I missed three games. I think I, I let the lead in, in minutes play. DeMar still kind of young, 34, not young, but I feel like DeMar as a human being don't feel old, super old yet. Like, yeah, when he turned 36 or like in, in about two years, he going to feel it a little bit. But if he stay healthy after them couple these next couple years, basically he has to literally, it's a mind thing these next two, three, four years for him. By far, like, <laughs> you know, those just show, you know, just the hard work, the dedication, the love of the game that I had and just the will that, you know, I tried to have the, you know, just put the Bulls back on top, make the Bulls a respectable team, you mm -hmm. know. So, you know, I gave it my all, you know, um, through the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ugly. But, you know, one thing I really appreciate about that, that my time in, in Chicago was definitely my teammates, you mm -hmm. know, all of them, you know, from Kobe, Kobe White to, you know, Pat Williams to Vooch to, you know, Zach to Lonzo. Um, you know, all those guys that I played with, man, um, it was it was it was a special time. You know, I gained a different type of bond with most of those guys that was there for sure. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, you know, what I mean, that core guys and Lonzo and Caruso and yeah, for, Pat my, Williams. my dog, AC, that's uh, my that's my favorite. <laughs> That's my, that's I was my, gonna say you missed like listen, I'm my, my bad AC. Yeah, AC, best player. No, I ain't gonna lie, Caruso. That's I gotta put this out here. Caruso probably my top three favorite teammates of all time, man. Yeah, I nice. love I love I love that dude, man. I love I love I love AC, man. Like yeah. he basically Kyle Lowry got to be your favorite teammate, and then it's Caruso. What you mean your top three? Everybody start thinking like who's the other guy, Kyle. It gotta be Kyle. He know he know how I greet him every time I see him. <laughs> That's my dog. So joining joining that core guys, like I know for me when I first got that trade and went to Oklahoma, I knew immediately I had to change my game and tried to elevate. When I went to LA, I knew I had to change my game yeah. and try to elevate. When you went to Chicago and you with that core, with Lonzo, with Levine, with Caruso, Pat Williams, Vucevic, what part of your game was you like? I want I need to elevate and I and, and and I need to add that to this group. I think my time in San Antonio put me in a place to where like I, I it was like a university that I graduated in three years at when I was in San Antonio because Pop challenged me in a whole different level that I've never been challenged in before. Mm -hmm. 
more so from understanding how to be a playmaker, how to play without the ball, how to make your teammates around you way better, make them comfortable, make them make them find different ways in in in, in having confidence in the game. Um, and I carried all that over with my ability, obviously, to be able to score when I went to, you know, to Chicago. And I kind of put all that together and I kind of also felt free again, you know, because I always try to play in a system when I was in San Antonio. But when I got to Chicago, I remember the first thing they, you know, they told me was, you know, be yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's all I needed to hear. And I, I kind of just, you know, unleashed it. Mm -hmm. Shout out Billy. I know, I know yeah, Billy let you rock. Shout out Billy, man. <laughs> Billy Donovan, man. He, he let me, you know. Yeah, you know. nah, Billy let you rock. I, Billy let you rock, man. That's one thing I fuck with Billy for, man. He yeah. let you hoop. He let you play. He let yeah. you fuck up. He let Billy? I thought that was Paul George. But you do, you know what I mean? As long talk, as it's in. Yeah, you could talk to him about anything. Anything. Like, uh, Billy, Billy, I love Billy, man. Yeah. Upon your arrival in Chicago, you had just mentioned you had some young guys on the team with Kobe White and Patrick Williams who have shown a ton of improvement since they've got into the league. How would you, as a vet now, you know, engage with those younger players and either give them tidbits, wisdom, whatever you want to call it, to motivate them to, to get better year after year? I think more so for me, I, I, I show myself to be overly relatable to them. You know, I don't, I don't perceive myself of being like, you know, I'm X and my, I'm this much older than you. I played this many more games than you. It's like, nah, I'm like, I'm a man like you a man. You know what I mean? I'm going to respect you as such. And with that, everything I do know that you may not know, I want you to have. And I really approach it from that standpoint as like, like, like y'all, like y'all my partners and I want y'all to have everything that I probably wasn't able to have at your age. And, you know, they, they're they overly receptive of that. And, like, like that's to my point. Like, those dudes, like, listen. They ask questions. They 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 sit and listen. They, you know, there's been times I sat and talked to the young dudes for, like, hours, whether if it was on a plane, in a locker room, um, shoot the shit with them because it's like I want them to understand what it takes to be special and play a long time in this league. And Type shit. Like, he really, like, Bro, y'all don't understand. Like, I went through a hump where I was real good not winning going against Bron, and I didn't give up. Like, y'all don't understand. LeBron made DeRozan better. DeRozan not winning made DeRozan a better player. Would you rather win a championship and get lazy or not win a championship at all and stay hungry and have them stand still and still have a legacy type shit? I would take the championship. I ain't going to cap because I was going to work hard regardless. Actually. And with that, I lead by example by doing all the other stuff that I may not say by being on time, you know, being respectable, understanding and being considerate of everybody else's space when it comes to, you know, the weight room, on the court, locker room, playing, landing, whatever it may be. You know, a lot of things that may go over a lot of people's head that I try to just be consistent with so guys can see and understand what it takes to be in a lead a long time. You know, the, the goal is to play as long as you is 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 as you desire. But with that understanding, like the game got so much to 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 give. Don't disrespect it. I know you and uh I know you and Zach was tight. And uh, you know, it was a long summer for me as well, being in LA, not knowing what my outcome was gonna be, yeah. but I knew, you know what I mean, I had to be connected with why, right? Yeah. Hitting wide, like, yo, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about doing that. Ultimately, it came to an end where why, why was the first phone call I had to make? Yeah. Hey. Bro, P, PG, you gonna always be PG. Bro, shit didn't work out here. I gotta go elsewhere. What was that conversation like with you and Zach when you was ultimately, hey, my time here in Chicago is over? You know it's crazy, like, and this is probably insight to to the fans that probably don't understand how the business may work. But you know, you know, from our perspective, we know you kind of have a feel and understanding way before anything happens. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these conversations was was talked about, you know, early on as certain things being a possibility. Mm -hmm. And if this is a possibility, 
these are the options. This is how I may go. Look out for this. Expect this. So me and Zach used to have a lot of those conversations on a plane, you know, in a locker room, especially, you know, he was going through a lot this season with injuries and, you know, everything he was going through with, with rumors and everything. So more so me always trying to have those conversations with him so it could be, you know, one, reassuring and understanding that, you know, like, this is part of the game. This is part of the business that we in. Mm-hmm. You know, this this may happen if this don't happen. So it was a constant communication of 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 everything along the way. The ifs, the possibilities. So when it came to make a, a decision, it wasn't a surprise or a shock or anything. Right, right, it was right. more so like, you know, go be happy. Go like go go win. You deserve the win mm-hmm. because it was so it was always that constant communication with especially with me and Zach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do before we, cause I, that team was super talented, bro. Yeah. When you think of Lonzo, if he don't get hurt, yeah. Zach, if he don't get hurt, Pat Williams is up and coming. Caruso yep. as a six man is is crazy. Vucevic is one of the best young bigs, not young anymore, but he's one of the best bigs in our league. Mm-hmm. Like when you when you when you look at the team that could have been like. Is it a little bit of like, damn, I wish like this window could have been a lot better. For sure. Had things yeah, gone man, different. 100%, 100% because like I, I was so close with all the guys like, you know, like Ayo DeSumo that, you Even know, I, Ayo. Want, I wanted to be a part of like their success mm-hmm. as far as well as their growth. Like I watched these, I watched how hard these dudes work. And these conversations I had with, with all of them from Kobe and all this to where it's like, yo, like I, like I'm that, but that's another part that I think people don't understand like, how much I try to bust my ass even with us dealing with so many injuries against the gun and 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 not having everything we may need need I try to salvage so much because I didn't want to see it go because mm-hmm. I I wanted to be part of these young guys that work so hard success so it was it was like come on man we got to take we 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 got to do this because if it go the other way you know from the top they got to make a decision and when they make a decision, it's gonna ho- it's gonna go down a whole nother route that may prolong the success. You seeing success, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that was one thing. Like I always was hopeful for because I wanted to be a part of all those young guys' success. I wanted to win with them. I wanted to be a part of you know what it was like. You know those first four months, my first year in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With the dollars instant, our my bad. They ended the video like that, and I ain't never seen a white dude like that. But like, comment, share. DeRozan and Sack, bro. He gonna end his career in Cali. He gonna who? And he playing. He's still playing to win. But is you really go win? It's possible. It's possible. This is how the, the NBA work. Out. But nah, it ain't possible. I don't care. The Kings, y'all need a real big. The Rose are not no fucking sharpshooter. Y'all don't have no sharpshooter. Y'all got a bunch of people that's going in the paint. They're going to clog that shit up. Yeah, the Rose got a midi, but that shit getting clogged up too, bro. You got to be able to shoot that bitch from the logo, bro. Like, comment, share, bro. I'm just keep it all the way up, billion. And do it, dear.